morning, everybody. Today is Monday, April 13th. It is our second day in the octave of Easter. Praise God. Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. And so we're filled with a great deal of joy. Today we will start with Psalm 93, which gives us an image of the power and glory of Jesus. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is King with majesty and robe. The Lord has robed himself with might. He has girded himself with power. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their thunder. Greater than the roar of mighty waters, more glorious than the surgings of the sea, the Lord is glorious on high. Amen. Today our gospel passage is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, and this is how it reads. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce the news to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had happened. The chief priests assembled with the elders and took counsel, and they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, telling them, You are to say, His disciples came by night and stole him while we were asleep. And if this gets to the ears of the governor, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. The soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed, and this story has circulated among the Jews to the present day. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, everybody, we're given a great sense that Jesus Christ has conquered. He's overcome death, he died for our sins, and not even death has power over him. God is king of everything. God is the one who brings life even in the midst of things that cause evil and death. God always is going to be faithful and he's going to conquer. So what does this lead us to reflect on today? Well, I think in a, in a way, that's why we have today the beautiful church filled with the Easter lilies, that smell that always permeates the church on Easter is such a beautiful smell, the freshness of life. And then we have in the background over there to, uh, would be to my, my right, the Easter candle. The Easter candle represents the presence of Jesus reality that his light comes and in, into the darkness and overcomes it with his grace. And so what does this teach us? It teaches us to trust, to trust in God. Remember, Jesus promised his disciples three times that he would go through the cross, he would suffer, he would die. He also promised that he would rise, he'd rise from the dead, and he did. And so hope, everybody, as part of our Christian life as a theological virtue, always is a combination of a desire for something and the expectation of receiving it. So what do we desire in life? We desire happiness. We desire beatitude. And we hope to receive it. Sometimes in life we question whether or not it's going to happen. But with Christ, we know that it does. In his conquering of sin, the rolling back of the stone from the tomb, his ascension out of that tomb, his resurrection brings us new life. Brings us new life. And the hope of us receiving happiness is now guaranteed. So we must just hope in the promises of Christ, knowing that he always delivers whatever it is that we ask for. Amen.